Welcome to this video on what's new in Pixel Pro 11 Update 2. Let me start with a few technical announcements. Pixel 11 Update 2 is now supported in Acrobat 11, both Standard and Pro, and on Windows 8. And there is now also a Polish version, both for the user interface and the reports. The Ghent Workgroup 2012 profiles have been extended. The profiles available in the previous version only checked compliance with the 2012 profiles, but now the new ones also have uh, fixes to make the file compliant, of course, in as far as this is technically possible. We have also added the number of standard ICC profiles from color management organizations like ECI, IFRA, and ID Alliance. There are several places in the user interface where you can access ICC profiles, as here in the color management part of the Pitsop Pro preferences. And here you will see that the list of available standard profiles for the device de dependent uh, color spaces has been extended. The tolerance for page size checking used to be a fixed value of one desktop point being one seventy seconds of, of an inch or thirty five hundredths of a millimeter. But as you can see, this has now become user definable. In the preflight profile editor, you can now edit action lists that have been added to a preflight profile in place. Like what I'm doing here, by changing this value to, for example, 85%. It is important to note here that any changes only apply to the embedded action list. The original action list remains unchanged. Also new here is that you can toggle the execution of the action list on or off by means of this toggle. And as this toggle can be enabled for variable names, you can use smart preflight boolean variables to determine whether or not to execute this particular action list. After having pre-flighted a file, Pitstop Pro shows the navigator with the list of errors and warnings and fixes. Under the actions, you find a function show report, and there's a new report type available. Now, as the name suggests, this report is basically the same as the low resolution annotated report but scaled to fit on an A4 page. The difference with the other three annotated report types is that they have the same media box size as the original file, which in this case here is 1.6 by 1.8 meters. And for large format printing, this can be problematic as the file size of the report can remain pretty big. Here you see the comparison of the file sizes of the original file and the reports. The original 1.6 by 1.8 meter file is 4.1 megabytes in size. The full resolution annotated report is even slightly bigger because it contains the annotations. The low resolution annotated report is already considerably smaller, but it's still only about half the size of the original. Plus, the bigger the original, the bigger the report, and the scaled one finally clocks in at under one megabyte and will do so regardless of the size of the original. The most important improvement in Smart Preflight is the ability to define drop down lists that will be presented to the user when running uh, the Preflight profile. But there are also a few other interesting novelties, especially in combination with the ability to toggle action lists on or off, as mentioned previously, which is why we have made a separate video on the topic of what is new in Smart Preflight, where this is explained in more detail. Finally, there's a very interesting new feature to split pages in half, which is often required when you receive spreads rather than single pages or a mix of them. You do that by running a global change called split pages in half, which will do exactly that. For this feature too, we have a separate video to explain in depth how it works and what you can do with it. Thank you for watching this video.